it's not even government. It's uh, corporate. What do you call it? Corporate oligarchy. Yeah, corporate which is a oligarchy. form of government. And yeah, it's a form of government. And you're right, 100. percent That's exactly where we where we are right now. That's that, that what we never it is. voted on, but what it what it became. It's yes. just what it turned into. It's what capitalism turns into, basically. Mm-hmm. Because you said it best, Jesse. Uh, if you want to kind of go into that on how, oh, like why we're a corporate. Yeah, yeah, oligarchy? I'm down with that. Yeah, how it became that way. Yeah, 100. percent Um, how do we become a corp corporate oligarchy? It's Started with capitalism. It, well, right? yeah, no, it's a fundamental flaw of capitalism, and and what I've talked about earlier, I still think capitalism is the best way to run a civilization, but it has its flaws too. There is no perfect system, and this is one of the flaws of it: is it can turn into this, to where it is now corporations and mainly billionaires, like the top top one percent, end up deciding so much shit because of the financial like death grip. That, that they hold over everyone else to where they can they can sway shit and your vote doesn't matter. I mean, when you can literally, when you have major, major corporations with billions upon billions of dollars and they can literally say, hey, look, you have to do this or else you are not going to be the next president. You have to do this and you will be the next president. They, they follow suit. Same with congressmen and everything else, which is why all these decisions that are made in government and stuff, it goes back to what Jesse was saying. It is a corporate oligarchy because they're all made at a higher level by the people who have money. Because we've done an awful fucking job of preventing... I don't, I don't under... Like, our founding fathers said it right whenever... And I don't know if it was the founding fathers that came up with this, but I'm sure the monopoly law came up pretty quick within capitalism whenever they realized, holy shit, man, power needs to be spread around. It can't just be one person that holds all the pieces to something and then now can fucking just charge whatever the fuck they want for it because it's a it's a necessity and that's, you know, a violation against fucking human rights. But yet, we live in a day and age where five corporations literally own everything. How the fuck is that not some form of monopoly there? Or is it just because it's spread out just it's within, like, it's, five? It's, it's because, no, it's because it's spread out for what they're owning, the way the monopoly stuff works. So, like, for example, like Rothschild... And all these other big ones that came up during like the uh, the Great Depression, whenever everybody's stocks plummeted, so on and so forth, everything went down. They bought up everything, so they don't have a monopoly because they don't own every el- electric company, but they own the biggest electric company, the biggest oil company, the biggest gas company, the but biggest supermarket. Co- like when you own they end all up, these different things. But they've ended up holding a monopoly on what's the most important thing and that is influence. They now have a monopoly on influence to where, okay, if you were to go back a hundred years, uh, the general population of the United States had like 90 whatever percent influence. Now, how much actual influence does the everyday fucking person have as far as like voting and all this as to where positions of power? So what I'm saying is it's not a monopoly in the sense of business like, oh, I own every oil company now so I can change the price to whatever I want and take advantage of the people. They get around that, and which I know is the traditional monopoly law, but they have a monopoly over, over fucking influence and how uh, you know, all, all the shit gets, gets ran. Like you know they have a monopoly over that. What's fucked up about that is that people can still have a say because money, money talks. Like you can speak with your wallet. Here's the thing, though. So you would say, oh, I'm just not going to spend money at these companies. What you run into, though, is then it's been made illegal to not spend money in some ways. For example, I don't want to pay for water, so I'm going to collect rainwater. It's illegal. It's illegal to to collect rainwater. They made it that way. So you literally have to pay for your water. Minus electricity. I mean, you can go solar. and I mean, granted, it's expensive. I didn't say... I mean... It's true. I mean, it's expensive. You know, you're spending like 25k, and then once that's paid off, then you're putting money back into. I the bet you there's grid. a tax for that. I bet you there's a tax for doing that. And there's got to be for that's sure. That's what I'm saying though. No matter what, you're paying the money one way or another. Even if you try to be like completely like, I'm gonna get off the grid. I'm gonna not support these companies by not spending my money on them. You, you it's made illegal not to. And I'm just using the water one as an example because it's the only one I can think of right now. But the fact that if you want to go out there and be like, I'll collect my own rainwater so on and so forth, store it in barrels, like purify it, blah, blah, blah. And then the government can literally say, come in and be like, yeah, you're going to have to pay a fine and get jail time for this if you don't stop. Right. What? Yeah. I mean, it's that's how deep they are, man. They're, they're extremely deep. 
And I don't think a lot of people know about the corporate oligarchy that we live in. I, I think it's very hidden in the shadows and people it's never taught. It's not a word that I knew until Jesse had mentioned it in a podcast what, sometime this year. I never knew what a corporate oligarchy was. And I think for people to know what it is and understand what it is and how it became is very important. Well, I mean, you should have learned about oligarchies in school. But you don't realize... You don't realize it's a corporate no oligarchy we live station, under, but you, no you learn what that type goes, of government America is. No America the Great, the best corporate oligarchy that in, in human existence, that, that's, or human history. The greatest corporate oligarchy. In, in, no, they don't use that. Yeah. They go... Democracy. Yeah, democracy. Yeah. <laughs> Which we're not even a democracy. We're a republic. Yeah, yeah. A democratic republic, right? That's what we're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Which is probably the purest form of great of should be the best way to. No, we, uh, no, a pure democracy would be the best way. But if, that's if everything was played by the rules correctly and everyone was uncorruptible. Capitalism is fucking perfect, but sadly, right. people are corruptible. Yeah, it doesn't work. Doesn't well, work. I, what I was kind of more geared, not geared towards, but was just like your explanation on certain uh, facets of people who hold mass amounts of money and why we don't progress in technology is for the fact that if you're ma- if you're a billionaire off oil, you're not going to just step back and say, hey, we're going to let this new innovation come in. We're going to get off oil. No. For, the, for the betterment of uh, your society or even the world, what you end up doing is because you've spent so much hard work creating the company and uh, making money off this one technology that whenever a new one comes in, that's better and more efficient and healthier for the earth or whatever it is, just new and better technology, you have enough funds to suppress it and prevent it from coming out, and then people have to keep using the same technology that this overruling fucking power I mean, uh, has control over. Someone could the, great, create- the best example is the oil industry because yeah. back in the 80s, I believe, is the first electric car that came out and outperformed gas engines. I heard there was electric cars back in the 50s, man. Oh, I'm, I'm sure, it but... It surprise me. Why, I mean, I don't the, see why I mean, not. But, I mean, whenever it was trying to come out, uh, back in the 80s, I'm pretty sure it was either the 80s or the 90s, but they had outperforming electric car models that were outperforming gas engines that were the new up-to-date models, and Ford fucking shut that shit down. Which, that's kind of a... 